Hello everybody, welcome to Sertua's Accounting Lessons PH and welcome to our continuation of our discussion for the series Conceptual Framework and Accounting Standards. Ngayon po, we will discuss International Accounting Standard 8, Accounting Policies, Changes in Accounting Estimates, and Errors. Okay. First of all, we will be defining accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates, and prior period errors. Let's start. Okay, first, accounting policies. These are specific principles, basis, conventions, rules, and practices applied by the entity in preparing and presenting financial statements. So, in the course of the entity preparing their financial statements, ano po ba yung sinusunod nilang mga principle? Ano po ba yung sinusunod nilang mga conventions, rules, and practices sa paggawa po mismo ng FPS? Now, later, i-discuss natin yan specifically, which is the selection and application of accounting policies. But the, uh, the best example of uh, the selection and the application of an accounting policy is, for example, paano mo ba i-value yung inventory that you will present in your financial statements? Siya po ba eh naka-first in, first out, o naka-weighted average? So, yun po. No, paano po ba natin na uh, siya ipe-present sa FS paano po ba natin siya sa pagpe-prepare po natin ng FS paano parang ganoon no so later we will be discussing paano kapag ka nagkaroon ng change so let's say for example we changed from FIFO to weighted average or we're already using weighted average we go to FIFO okay how will we be able to do that okay IAS 8 has guidance uh, guiding principles for entities to do that okay the next is the change in an accounting estimate. Adjustment of the carrying amount of an asset or liability and the related expense thereunto, resulting from, uh, from reassessing the expected future benefits and obligations associated with that asset or liability. Ngayon, syempre hindi maiwasan, kailangan magkaroon ng uh, tinatawag natin, tingnan nyo tong word na to, reassessment. No, nire-reassess natin yung expected future benefits or kung sakaling liability yung pinag-uusapan natin, obligations, no, ng mga asset or liabilities no. For example, yung life ng isang property plan and equipment, accounting estimate yun. Or baka magkaroon ng change in uh, the depreciation method na ginagamit natin. From straight line, gagawin mong SYD, or from SYD, gagawin mong uh, double declining balance method. Dun sa mga first time marinig yung mga methods na yun, those are different kinds of depreciation methods. So yung mga natutunan nyo sa basic accounting like straight line method, meron pa po tayong iba. No? SYD, some of the years digit method, yan. meron din po tayong accelerated uh, methods like double declining balance, yung mga ganyan, na malaki mag-depreciate sa una, tas papaliit ang papaliit ng depreciation. Matututunan nyo yan when you are already in your intermediate accounting courses. Okay? Ngayon, syempre, kailangan ng reassessment basa sa flow ng benefits o hindi po kaya kung hindi flow ng future benefits, yung mismong obligations na kailangan i-fulfill ng entity. No? Kailangan ng reassessment and when that reassessment happens, then kailangan na po ng change in those accounting estimates. Okay? Prior period errors, mga pagkakamali ng nakaraan, okay? Omissions or misstatements in the financial statements. It might be an omission, it might be a misstatement. In the financial statements for one or more periods from a failure to use or misuse of a reliable information that was available and could reasonably expected to have been obtained and taken into account in preparing the FS. Ito pong mga prior period errors na ito, from the word itself, errors, pwede po siya mathematical. Mistakes, sinabi ng standard, hindi galing sa akin, no? Yung mga errors na yan, pwede galing sa mathematical. Mistakes, o di po kaya may nakumit ka, o kaya mali yung, yung gumagamit ka naman ng standard, pero mali yung interpretation mo, mali yung, mali yung pagkakagamit mo sa kanya, yun, mga errors din yun. Actually, uh, the standard also tells us na kasama po sa prior period errors ang fraud. Although, ang fraud po kasi, susulat ko, fraud. Yeah, fraud. Although, pagdating nyo po ng auditing, meron po talagang pinagkaiba ang error sa fraud. But the standard actually tells us the word fraud as part of your prior period errors. 
Okay? Now that we know already these three, dito na po ako sa next part. Ayan. Selection and application of accounting policies. Eh, bakit ba tayo FIFO? Bakit tayo first and first out method sa inventories? Bakit tayo weighted average? Okay. Now, in the selection and application of these accounting policies, ang sabi ng standard, an accounting policy applied to a transaction or event must be determined by applying yung mismong standard. So, the basic principle is, pwede siyempre for a certain transaction, may guiding principles tayo, which is our IFRS, our International Financial Reporting Standards, susundin mo po yung sinasabi na guiding principles ng ating mga standards. At hindi lang po yun. Meron din po tayong mga available interpretations from IFRIC, di ba? IFRIC, no? And other guiding principles. Pero syempre, kumbaga ang pinaka-basic mong pupuntahan is, if you are to... Uh, if you have transactions about property, plant, and equipment, then use IAS 16, property, plant, and equipment, and the guiding principles inside it. Okay? Kung investment property naman, eh di IAS 40, investment property. Kung meron ka mga patents, trademarks, copyrights, mga intangible assets, eh di IAS 36, intangible assets. Ganun po siya. No? Sinasabi po dito is basically the application of the standard itself and the guiding principles and interpretations na available po sa atin. Yun po yung panggagalingan ng isa-select nating accounting policy at paano natin siya i-apply. Now, in the absence of those guiding principles, we are allowing, ano po yung ina-allow? Management judgment. Pag-uusapan na ng management, paano ba ibubuk to ng maayos? Okay? In developing a relevant and reliable accounting policy. Now, in principle and in practice, rather, no, pwede naman po yan mga, mga past practices na or, or mga best practices or industry practices na na umiikot na no, sa mismong industry. Pwede rin naman po yan. Or positions ng bawat uh, accounting firms. No? Pwede rin po yan kasi nga po, no, through years of experience din na dinadaanan na nila sa, sa industry, no, nakakabuo na rin tayo ng mga ganyang best practices or a certain position on how to deal with these, trans these transactions. No? May certain positions na po yung mga accounting firms natin. And when you work in those accounting firms, you, you'll, get, you'll get to know them, you'll get to to understand them how to properly book transactions na hindi namin lahat madi-discuss sa classroom. Okay? So, pag-work na kayo sa big four. Okay. Now, let's move here. An entity shall select and apply those accounting policies, ano pong sinabi? Consistently. Kailangan consistent. Something na hindi magawa ng jowa mo. Okay? Kailangan po consistent. Kung FIFO, laging FIFO. Kung weighted average, laging weighted average. No? For that certain transaction, and you have chosen and applied that certain accounting policy, the entity must be consistent in using that and in presenting that in the financial statements. Okay? Ngayon, bago po tayo mag-uusap ng mga changes, changes in policies, changes in estimates, pag-usapan po natin, ano po bang pinagkaiba ng retrospective application and prospective application. Kasi we're not talking about changes eh. Nag-change ang accounting policy. FIFO, mag-weighted average. O hindi po kaya, napag-decide ng company na parang mas bagay pala sa ating current operations na hindi straight line method, kundi mag some of the years digit method tayo sa depreciation ng ating mga PPE. Except land, hindi din depreciate ang land. Okay? So, Ano po ang sinasabi natin retrospective application and what's the difference be, uh, on it with prospective application? Okay, ganito po yan. May drawing ako. <laughs> Una po natin pag-usapan ito, retrospective application. Medyo maate, no? Retrospective. Retrospective pwede rin yun. <laughs> okay? Retrospective application. Pag retrospective application, let's say for example, this is 2023, no? The period of change is 2023. Pag nagkaroon ng change in accounting policy, for example, pagdating, so change ka dito, di ba? This is the period of change. Pagdating ng 2024, future period, yun na rin yung gagamitin mo. 
Ang kaso lang, kapag ka retrospective, from the word itself, may retro, retro, pabalik, no? Pati yung dati, iti-change mo na parang it has always been applied. No? Ipapakita mo, when you present the financial statements, as if we are always been, we had always been applying this accounting policy. For example, dati, naka-weighted average ka sa inventory. Nag-decide ang company, ifa 5 Okay? So, next year, disyempre, we have to apply it consistent, consistently na unless kailangan mag-change ulit, no? Depende sa nature ng transactions. Pero, pati syempre, future periods, let's say, for example, kung wala naman ibang mangyayari, di 5 na rin to. Pero, ito sinasabi sa atin ng standard. On the period of change, for example, ito yung period of change, ano, kunwari, 2023, edi syempre, may 2022 FS kang ipipresent. Ganun po kasi sa industry. Pag pinresent natin yung 2023 FS, katabi niya yung 2022. Nakakomparative. Ang sabi ng standard, retrospective, pag sinabing retrospective application, as if it had always been applied. So, ibig sabihin, dahil gusto natin ipakita na as if it has always been applied, hindi yan dapat weighted average. Pag pinresent mo yan at the period of change, pati yung previous period, kailangan nakapay po yan. As if it has always been applied. Okay? Yun po yung sinasabi natin, retrospective application. Now, let's talk about this prospective application. Pag prospective, pa-future lang. For example, you have been using the straight line method of depreciation. Now, the management has... Uh, is thinking na, I think we have to use straight line method. So, in the period of change, you use the straight line, ah, uh, sorry, some of the years, again, again. Now, let's say, for example, that the entity decided to use, I think it's better if we use some of the years digit method. So, at the period of change, you have to present it at SYB. And then, syempre, in the previous periods, kailangan ito din ay some of the years digit method na din. Ito, manatiling straight line yan, kansa na yun, it's okay. Okay? Perfectly fine. Okay? It's perfectly fine na siya po ay naka-straight line na na-compute natin. At hindi mo siya dapat i-retrospective application na dahil SY dito, ibabalik, ay kailangan yung computation mo dito, gagawin mo sum of the years digit method. Hindi na. Okay na. Kansas nila. Okay? Pwede na. So dito, SYD, padiretso ka na. Pa-future periods na lang po ang prospective application. So madaling salita, padaliin natin. Pag retrospective application, dapat as if it has always been applied. So at the period of change, pati future period, it's a change mo. Pati yung past. Yung mga mahilig magungkat ng past, yan. Pwede kayo dyan sa retrospective application. Tapos, kapag ka naman po prospective ang application, forget the past na dire-direcho. Move on na tayo. Yung mga badali mag-move on, ang tawag po sa inyo ay prospective application. Okay. Now that you know the difference between retrospective application and prospective application, let's now talk about changes and how to deal with errors, basically. Okay. Naming sinabi. <laughs> Asa na? Okay. Changes in accounting policies. A change in accounting policy is permitted. Permitted. Pwede daw po kapag it's required by an IFRS or an interpretation and it will result in our financial statements providing more relevant information. Tandaan nyo po na isa po sa qualitative financial, uh, sorry, qualitative characteristics ng financial information na diniscuss po natin sa conceptual framework is kailangan po yung pinipresent nating information relevant. Kung hindi na po relevant sa iyong transactions na mag-FIFO ka, mag, baka kailangan mo na mag-weighted average, no? Pero pinag-aaralan po yan siyempre. Now, it's permitted to do if it's required by an IFRS or interpretation. O yun nga po, di ba? Kung makakapagbigay naman po ng uh, mas relevant information yung pag-change mo from FIFO to weighted average or weighted average to FIFO, you're allowed to do that. Ngayon, ang sabi ng standard, kung wala naman daw pong specific transition provisions, yung kumbaga eh, pag nag-transition ka from one accounting policy to another, and then the standard tells you na wala namang specific na kailangan gawin na tinatawag natin specific transition when you're transitioning from one accounting policy to another and then um, the general rule is that all changes in your accounting policy should be applied retrospectively. Tandaan niyo po yan ha. 
a change in accounting policy will be retrospective. Okay. Paano naman ko po kapag ka nagkakaroon tayo ng changes in your accounting estimates? Paano naman po pag accounting estimates? Okay. The effect of a change in an accounting estimate shall be recognized in profit or loss. Kailan? In the period of change or in the period of change and, merong end, future period. So, for example, nag-change ka from straight line method to some of the year's digit method. So, syempre, pati future periods, apektado na ng paggamit mo ng some of the year's digit method. Unless next year na pag-decide ng company na ibang <laughs> uh, 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 depreciation method din ang gagamit. Pero kunyari, nag-change ka from straight line method to uh, some of the year's digit, di dire-diretso mo nang gamitin yung some of the year's digit. Kaya sabi ng standard, yung change... In accounting estimate natin, it shall be recognized in PL na ang effect niya is not only in the period of change, pwede rin po yung period of change, pati po yung future period. Now, ang sabi po sa atin, any change in accounting estimates should be prospective lang. Current, papuntang future. Forget the past na. Move on na. Okay? Lastly, what will we do about errors? Okay? So, what about errors? An entity must correct, must correct, ha? Must correct. Tandaan nyo yan. Ang sabi ng standard, the entity must correct. Tinatama daw po, dapat, ang lahat ng pagkakamali. Standard na nagsabi niya, hindi ako. Okay? Of all prior period errors, paano daw po? Retrospectively. Itama ang mga pagkakamali ng nakaraan. Okay? Yan ang sabi ng standard, okay? Now, it's either you restate the comparative amounts for the prior period presented in which the error occurred. So, kung kailan po nangyari yung error, tatama mo. Okay? Kung ano po yung mga apektadong year, tatama mo, lalo na po dito. You have to restate the opening balance of assets, liabilities, and equity for the earliest prior period presented. Kaya po may mga entities na, let's say for example, nagpe-present ng uh, profit and loss for 2023, Tapos for December 31, 2022, pati yung opening balance na January 1, 2022, pinipresent. Or basically, that's uh, December 31, 2021, which is January 1, 2022. Yung opening balance ng 2022, pinipresent din kung talagang apektado dahil po doon sa errors na yun. Ang sabi po sa atin ng standard, the entity must correct all of those prior period errors retrospectively. So, pati po ang past uungkati natin kasi kailangan po itama yung pagkatama Okay? So, I hope this discussion of IAS 8 eh, naging magandang starting point po sa inyo in uh, knowing about these accounting policies, estimates, and errors. You will be handling, uh, I'm sorry, you will be learning handling. You will be learning po uh, uh, changes in these policies and estimates in your intermediate accounting courses. No? So, dahil po uh, CFAS ito, more theoretical, pagdating po natin ng intermediate accounting, nandun na po yung mga calculations. Paano po, pag nag-change tayo ng accounting policy, paano po yung computation, pag nag-change na po tayo ng mga depreciation method natin, and basically how to do some accounting for uh, errors. And paano po kapag ka nakapag-closing entries na, tsaka mo na huli yung error, or hindi pa nakakapag-closing entries, tsaka mo na huli yung error, saan ang effect sa ating PL and retained earnings, pag-uusapan po natin yan sa intermediate accounting. Maraming salamat po for being with us uh, in this discussion, and uh, abangan po natin yung mga susunod pang video, tsaka paalala ko lang po, no, yung mga bagong style ng videos po natin, mga one-shot problem po natin, Meron na rin po tayo niyan. Request nyo lang po yung mga gusto nyong topics na mapag-usapan natin at kukumpitin natin yan to the best that we can. Maraming salamat po. Thank you and have a great day.